Ribeiro. National Stock Exchange of India has been actively involved with initiatives to educate the young generation of our country on the importance of financial management. One such initiative is NSE Finwill that focuses on educating and advising the young workforce of the country on wealth management to enhance financial literacy and to empower Insurance them. Insurance is for protection and investment is for growth. Another program facilitated by NSC IPFT is NSC Financial Quest. This inter-school financial quiz contest goes an extra mile by educating the young students on fundamentals of finance. On the buzzer, what is this? It's the formula for the simple interest. Simple interest is the right answer. Under the NSC Financial Quest Base Camps banner, the program engages students around the year through workshops on various topics, projects, interactive videos, and quizzes. The Caprio is bouncing checks of Pan Am. Plus 75 on Plus 75. To facilitate these two programs, NSC, along with CNBC TV18, has traveled across the country to bridge the wide knowledge gap in terms of finance. In this episode of NSE FinWiz, we are all set to achieve our objectives once again by gauging young professionals in a new city. Ultratech Cement Limited is one of India's largest cement companies and among the leading producers of cement globally. Ultratech's modern day journey began when the Aditya Birla Group acquired a sizable cement business from LNT back in 2004. Today, it is a clear industry leader in its segment, offering expert services and solutions for all kinds of construction needs. NSE Finwiz visited the headquarters of Ultratech Cement in Mumbai along with the experts to understand the employees' view on financial planning and wealth management with the theme, Dreams Come True. So, uh, financial literacy for me uh, primarily would mean... Uh, Knowing where to invest your money, what's good for your uh, money, what's not good for your money. That's one. Uh, secondly, it would also mean uh, ability for me to live my lifestyle, my dreams, but at the same time have an additional fund uh, for some, some uncertain uh, circumstances. Uh, currently, I am only having very basic conventional kind of plans, fixed deposits, recurring deposits, and of course a savings bank. But I wish to like broaden my horizons and get into stocks and all, mutual funds perhaps. Currently, uh, the bulk of my investment is in fixed deposits. The reason being that I would be purchasing a house soon for which I'll be needing some liquid cash at that time. However, going forward, I plan to invest some amount of uh, cash in uh, SIPs as well as in mutual funds. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of NSE Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. And I'm your host, Nitya Balakrishnan. Today we're in the financial capital of the country in the campuses of one of India's largest cement companies, Ultratech. I'm joined by two very special guests on today's episode. We have uh, Gaurav Mashrumwala, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, Mr. Gajendra Kotari, a pleasure having you here on NSE Finviz. We are talking about a time where making money is important, but at the same time, everybody is looking at enjoying life to the fullest. And when this is the generation that we're a part of, where you believe that you make money, but you also are entitled to enjoying it to the fullest, talk to us really about initially the difference between wealth management and wealth creation, are they synonymous to you? And how important is wealth creation in today's day and age? So, uh, wealth creation cannot happen if there is no wealth management. It's like making money and managing money requires two complete separate set of skills. To make money, you have to be expert in your occupation, whatever it could be. And to manage money, you require completely separate set of skills. In fact, that's the reason we find so many times actor, actresses, sports personalities making huge amount of money and in the later half of their life they struggle. So well, wealth creation may happen by earning unless you are not managing, you are not investing as per your goals, as per your requirement, you are not filing your things properly, you are not storing your documents properly, you are not regularly monitoring it, you will not be able to derive benefit out of it and as she rightly said then you will not be able to enjoy wealth. So. Yes, you need to create wealth, but for that, management is important. 
Uh, if I can ask you, Mr. Kutari, is there any ideal age one starts to, you know, set aside systematic uh, money towards investment? And if you've missed the boat, if you're already, say, 35, you've missed the boat in the initial years, is it actually that much of a loss when you talk about starting early? It is. In fact, uh, you know, you ask what's the ideal age? The answer is the ideal age is as young as possible. Uh, you know, in, in wealth creation, the only, the, the major asset or the major factor is time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wealth creation is all about power of compounding. And time is that crucial factor which plays a big role, you know. So, the, the more time you give to your investments, the more power it has. And the, the more you delay, the results can be devastating, you know, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, every five-year delay, if you do, your corpus will go down by half. So, if you are not starting at 19, you are starting at 25, though you may think 25 does it really make difference, your retirement portfolio is now by half. And if you delay 25, you come to 31, another it goes down by half. Mm -hmm. So, it can be a huge uh, loss, you know, uh, every year of delay, which you don't realize in the initial years, but when we then approach retirement, and most people come to us and say, look, I have lost so much time, do I, can I do anything magical now? Unfortunately, we, we are not magicians, we don't have any answer to this. And this is, uh, this is only what I, we can help you, you know. When you talk about uh, the power of compounding, why do you think Indians inherently do not actually start investing at a very early age? Do you think that trend is now changing? And if I were to ask you the best uh, vehicles to park your funds, because when you look at it, the traditional vehicles are the ones that come to mind initially. Fixed deposits, you talk about, you know, your PPF. But what are the tools that one has to look at at this day and age? Uh, the thing is that this is the first generation which is looking at investment. The generation prior to this was living in a protected economy. Mm -hmm. So, till 1992, 94, 96, and hence the rate of returns. You go to any bank and the rate of return was same, assured. I, I mean, in my life, I have seen peak PPF rate at 12%. 12% tax-free is a very good return. Uh, equity market wasn't that kind of developed uh, and the reach wasn't there as much. So gold, land, these are old instruments which were there. LICs, policies also had guaranteed returns of old policies 11-12%. So whatever the next generation usually picks it up from the older generation and there is that influence because investing is a lot to do with or money management has a lot to do with childhood. So, we are, we have been brought up under, at least people like me who are like 45, 47 plus, newer generation has had a situation where they had more exposure and hence they are slowly moving. So, it takes a complete generation to move from savings to investment and then newer instruments coming, education, exposure to international world and newer technology and then there is better person to talk on technology is what is changing the habits. So, it just, it takes about 25, 20, 25, 30 years before the entire way to do business or way to do transactions and the mindset changing. In fact, Rajendra, we, before I actually take a show of hands about the kind of investment that, uh, you know, uh, professionals here are doing, if I can ask you about the role of technology and how that has changed uh, the way we invest today. Right. Uh, in fact, technology has been one of the biggest game changer. Uh, Earlier there was dearth of information, you, you don't know whom to approach, mm -hmm. how to go about finding information, the taxation part of it and financial literacy was very low, you know. So now with many mediums coming, you know, you have, you can, your mobile becomes your personal financial advisor. Today you have access to thousands of blocks across the world. Mm -hmm. Today you have medium like television shows which you can consume on mobile while you are travelling. So you know, every moment you can actually utilize the benefit of technology, not just that. Today, you can entirely see your portfolio on your devices. You, at the touch of a button, you can execute transactions. You know, so everything is, is make, making the whole thing easier oh, oh, and accessible. Absolutely. And today, if I want to serve customers like I'm from Northeast, you know, mm -hmm. sitting from Mumbai, I can do it in five minutes, which was earlier not possible. So today, even people in the remote corner of India can have accessible to good advice anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the impact of technology. Okay. Uh, it's now time to open some questions from the audience. Uh, can I get Nitin Kamble, whose idea and dream basically is to set up his own business. The corpus that Nitin Kamble wants to collect is about 100 crore rupees, uh, but he can only set aside 20,000 rupees. 
given the fact that he has no time horizon in mind just yet, where do you think he should park his funds? To get 100 crores in 25 years, I mean, I did for myself, you need to set aside 1 lakh uh, 20,000 rupees a month at earning 20%, then you will then get, you'll get 100, 100 crores. So, 100 crores is actually a big journey, it's, it's a big amount. So, 20,000 if you are deciding to start, it may be a good start, but you need to actually increase the amount, you know, every year or as and when you can do because your destination is very far away and you want to complete it as soon as possible. So, you need to, you need to put a lot in capital, you know, either through lump sum or increase your SIP, then only I think you can achieve your goal in, in the shortest possible time. On that note, it's time to slip into a quick breather right here on this very exciting episode of NSE Finviz. But stay tuned, a whole host of tips on wealth creation on the other side. Welcome back to Season 4 of NSE Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. We're in conversation with Gaurav Mashruwala and Garindra Kotari here at Ultratech. My question now is focusing completely on the equity markets. We're sitting in Mumbai. Uh, Garindra, if I can have you answer the question, when you talk about investing in equity markets, everybody believes that it's quite simple. Invest, buy on declines and stay invested in the long term because th those are the two tips that everybody seems to give. Then, is that the right funder and why a financial planner or why an expert to guide you through this? Right. So, you know, there are almost 6,000 companies listed on the exchanges. Uh, you, you, we are all aware, you know, every day a new company comes up on listing. So, if, if, if it was that easy to make money out of equity, I think we wouldn't have been sitting here, you know. We would have been sitting in Bahamas and enjoying our life. <laughs> so, that is one. Secondly, out of these 6,000 companies, 90% of these companies actually destroys wealth. And there are 5% of these companies which just manage to give around 5 to 10% returns. And there are other 5% which goes on to create wealth. Equity is not about, uh, about buying stocks on paper. It is about buying businesses. Mm -hmm. If you like a business, why do you like a business? And if you think this business has a great prospect for next 5, 10, 15 years, then you should own it. And most of us here buy stock for 1 month, 2 months, 6 months and sell on profit. This is not how you are going to create wealth. You may make some profits in between but you can't create wealth by this strategy. So, wealth creation is a multi-decade exercise, you know. You have to own good businesses with great earnings potential and for 10, 20, 30 years, that's when the power of compounding kicks in and you create wealth. If I can have Rahul Goel from the audience identify himself, there is a question about <clears throat> how to select the right kind of shares or equity to actually invest in most performing, promising. What are the parameters to select it and how safe is the NCD? That's what Kajendra said earlier. If you on your own don't have skills, don't look at that. Look at mutual fund. If you have the skills, when you're saying how, if it's like, if you want me or Gajendra give you a list of 10 points, look at balance sheet, read quarterly reports, look at PE ratio, valuation. It's easier for us to say, but do you have time and do you have skills? If you're not going to do that regularly, which means you're going to leave your profession, don't do it. Otherwise, purely from pointers perspective, you may want, you should look at balance sheets and in balance sheet not only numbers but read chairman and directors complete speeches. Look at every quarterly results and study. Don't rely on anybody else. The way I said earlier, don't take diabetes medicine because neighbor is taking. Apart from that, construct a portfolio which is across sectors. But again, this is what you should have. There are a lot of avenues and places where you can go and qualify yourself. You can study that. You can do that online, you can go to those institutions, but if you are not going to do that, then don't do it. Don't put your hard earned money after or behind or on a recommendation which somebody else has stated. Uh, the question is, is it better to get tax benefit on the EMI rather than to pay upfront if you have surplus amount? Thanks for asking me this question. Here is, you are getting loan benefit up to 2 lakh, interest benefit up to 2 lakh? Yes, up to 2 lakhs. If you don't have loan on that 2 lakh, how much tax would you pay if you are in 30 percent bracket? Same. No. On 2 lakh income, you will pay 2 lakh tax? Oh good. On 2 lakh, so it is uh, yes. 60,000. 60,000. Right? So, you have two options. If you don't require money and continuing loan for tax, which means that I want to pay 2 lakh interest to save 60,000 tax. 
say pay 60,000 tax and save 1 lakh 40,000 extra. People don't get into it. People straight away think tax. Is, is my numbering clear? Because I would have ideally preferred. That's what happens again and again. Tax benefit soon ke people continue. Don't continue for tax benefit. Continue if you have to. There are also instances where because of this the tax bracket is changing from 30 to 20. Now those are very few cases. If you are really in that situation, then you may want to consider though we don't encourage. But otherwise to save 60,000 tax, you don't want to pay 2 lakh. Well, Personal Finance 101 with Gajendra and Gaurav but it's time to slip into another quick break. Stay tuned, we have a whole host of questions to be answered on the other side. So good to have you right back here on NSE Finviz and it's time to throw the floor open to the young professionals here at Ultratech. Request you to please identify yourself and ask your personal finance query on wealth creation management to one of our experts. I have a question. Let's say I have 2 lakh rupees which I want to invest. I have two options. One is I will invest in uh, mutual funds, in equities. Second option, I will park this 2 lakh rupees in bank fixed deposit. I will earn monthly interest. I will in invest this interest in SIP, which would give me a better returns. Right. Uh, so, there is no clear cut answer to be sure. Uh, it would have depend if, you know, if you are a first time investor in mutual funds and you have always been a fixed deposit investor, my option would have been the second one. So that you try out equities investments through monthly investments because your fixed capital is safe. The monthly interest you are earning, you can try out with this and over a period of time, once you get accustomed to this, you can put more money. Okay. On the other hand, if you would have been a seasoned investor, you know, then I would have said, you know, straight away you can put 2 lakhs into mutual funds because you you know how it works, you have seen the performance over a period of cycle, so you won't get anxieties, you know. So, to each person it's a different answer based on the background and, the, you know, the expected returns and the risk profile the person has. Okay. How much should I invest in equity versus the conventional things like PPF or NPS? So again, uh, Surendra, there is no one fixed answer, you know, there is no uh, a magical template, you know, which can give you the right solution. Again, it depends, it all boils down to your own choices as in your background, your risk preferences, what kind of returns to expect. If you are a person who can take higher risk and you want higher returns and as you said, I want to secure my two, three generations, you need to actually have huge amount of wealth, you know. So that cannot be generated by fixed income options. Fixed income options can only help you to preserve wealth. If you already have wealth, you want to preserve it, you can go for PPF and other things. But if you want to create wealth for the next generations, you have no option but high risk investments like equities. So that is one. Uh, but you know, um, again I would say you have to actually sit down and do a lot of homework in the sense writing down things in black and white, how much money you would require. See what you mentioned is very vague right now in the sense you know, you have to boil down to actual numbers, you may take professional help, then you will be far more clearer in mind and you know your goal should be also be realizable, you know you should be able to achieve that. Uh, the purpose of just goal is not to think big and you know be there, but can you achieve that also? And you have to break it in tasks so that you can go one at a time, achieve one by one and you know you come closer to the journey. Well on that note, we are absolutely timed out on this episode of NSE Finways. Gaurav Mashruwala and Gajendra Khotari, on behalf of my team and I, thanks so much for joining us on this episode and thanks for watching. First of all, I would like to categorize my goals uh, on short term, long term and medium term basis and then I will, I will allocate the corpus accordingly in that. Firstly, I thought I was a wise investor and I was totally in for a surprise when I attended this session. There were so many things I didn't know and so many relevant topics that I came to know about through this session. So, it was very enlightening, yeah.